In today's episode, we will discuss change management, and I'll give you some helpful tips to mitigate the impact of change on your organization that will foster the organization's trust in you and your IT team. Arguably one of the most important skills, change management is critical to a successful rollout of any project, application, process change, organization change, and pretty much any other change I can think of. The dictionary definition of change management is the systematic approach to dealing with the transition or transformation of an organization's goals, processes, or technologies. The purpose of change management is to implement strategies for effecting change, controlling change, and helping people to adapt to change. The operative part of this definition to me are change and people. Technological change can have significant impact on an organization and its people. My tool for judging the impact of change on people and the organization is to walk in their shoes. I think about various people's roles in the company and how this change might impact their daily work or make that daily work different or obsolete. If I don't know enough about a role, a role being a position within the company, then I ask those performing it. I speak with those doing so I can understand what helps and what hurts. My goal being to identify role-based and operational impact so that impact can be addressed. In attempting to look at a change from someone else's eyes, first thing you will typically perceive is apprehension. New technologies can be scary and people naturally have questions. The less communication coming out about a change, the more fearful people will become. The common questions people ask themselves upon first hearing about a change are, can I learn this? Will this replace me? Or how long will this make my work day? If you're interested in keeping your people happy, and you should be, then it's probably a good idea to alleviate those concerns. That can partly be accomplished through effective and consistent communication. Explaining why the change is occurring, what benefit it will bring to the company and to them, and say it more than once. The bigger the change, the more you should communicate, and the sooner you should start. Trying to view a change from another's perspective can also be applied if you're a CTO facing externally towards the customer. Change in an application can put end users off in a big way, and changes have even led to the demise of applications because the person leading the change did not fully think through how the customer would feel and react to that change. A common question from the customer to the CTO is, why did you change that functionality when it worked so well? Or, did you even bother to survey your customers before making such a change? My change adoption tools are involvement and inclusion. Do you want to alleviate fear and apprehension about a change? Of course you do, so involve people in the change. Include staff in the discussions about training that staff will receive and how it will be delivered. Request help from staff and the business in identifying the positive points of the change and the negative points of the change and ask for ideas or set up work groups to allow people to explore that negative impact and come up with mitigation strategies. Empower people in the change. Involvement and inclusion in the change process and allowing staff representation in the change will take the edge off most people's fears and apprehensions. The impact of a change dictates the amount of advanced communication that needs to happen and the types of communication that need to happen and the training that needs to happen. An example, if you're rolling out a new process for your IT team, let's say you're introducing a patch management program. For the most part, communications can be limited to your team about implementation of a change like this. You may have some report writers and analysts in other departments that you'll want to communicate that change to, but not to the company at large. This type of project only requires targeted communication to your internal team and targeted training. Change adoption issues for a patch management program would be minimal. If you're implementing a new EHR system, you will want to have targeted communications to stakeholders, the implementation team, 
decision makers, and other leadership with more general communications following. And you would begin those communications months in advance of the implementation start. Training would be something you would start in advance too, as well as probably adding more options. Change adoption issues for an EHR, electronic health record system, would be maximum and would require a rigorous change battle plan to meet the challenge. As human beings, we need to hear things a few times for them to sink in. And I'll frequently go over a new process multiple times with my team members, explaining to your team why the change is important and how it will impact them and how it will help them and the company are great ways to begin the change management process. Here are some tips to guide you on developing a good change management program for your organization. Number one, be mindful of the culture. This deserves to be said twice. Be mindful of the culture. Number two, communicate effectively and communicate early. The bigger the change, the earlier you need to start the communication about it and the more you need to communicate. Number three, create a change plan for the change, or as I like to call them, change battle plan. Timeline out the communications needed and decisions that are required like go no go. Plan the cutover strategy and communicate concisely with staff on when and how that cutover will occur. Milestone out your change battle success criteria that need to be met in order for the change to succeed and be perceived as successful. In order for any change to succeed, it must be perceived as succeeding in the hearts and minds of your coworkers. The larger the change, the more resistance to the change you will encounter. And there will always be resistance. You must plan for it. All these situations, which you do not want to be in, can easily be avoided with a little planning, some excellent communication skills, and a huge amount of empathy for your customers, users, coworkers, and their perspective on the change. Slip into their shoes and see the world from their angle. Be compassionate about the change. Next, assess how your company will adopt the change by looking at the culture and reviewing how historically changes were executed, perceived, and adopted. And be open to a change in your battle plan. First casualty of war is your change management plan. You will most likely need to morph your change strategy as you go to accommodate for the unforeseen and the ineffective. Get the organization behind the change. The more aligned your company is behind the change, the easier the change will be. Be the champion of the change. Be inclusive in the planning and seek staff involvement in the change. We've talked about a great deal around communication because that's such an important aspect of change management. However, for an IT leader, change management is about more than just communication. It's also about effective policy and procedure writing to introduce and control change, like the change control process. To affect change in a way that minimizes impact to the business, staff, other systems and services, and customers. It's about the change stabilization period and defining the maintenance and monitoring processes for a change and establishing accountability to team members for the monitoring and maintenance thereof. The bigger the change, the more formal should be the change control process and more rigorous should be the communications, testing, validation, approval, stabilization, and maintenance. Several more episodes will be posted over the next few weeks to my YouTube channel, The Saito Mentor. Had I a mentor at the right time, I may have avoided learning some things the hard way. So I decided to make the Saito Mentor series with my perspective on the Chief Information Technology Officer role for people that may find themselves where I was. No mentor and no clue.